No, you too, Peter, in one of the worst counties in, in America for, the, for this sort of thing as well. I mean, I, I would imagine that your situation is not much different, perhaps even worse than what's happening in Riverside County, right? Well, let me give you an idea. In the, in the year 2007, in Palm Beach, Broward, Dade County, there were 33,000 foreclosures valued at about $8.1 billion. This year, going through the beginning of December, we're up to 74,000, and wow. its uh, value is $19 billion. Wow. Wow. Where does it bottom out, Peter? Uh, from what we're seeing, Dade County, Miami, primarily where all the speculation occurred, uh, widespread. Most of that's already gone through the system. It's come out as a bank-owned property. Broward and Palm Beach counties, uh, primarily now, the real working-class type of people, uh, you know, uh, aside from Palm Beach Island, many of those people who are trying to hold on, they're starting to find themselves in a situation like Madeline right now, and, you know, they're starting to relinquish some of these properties. All right. Well, Danny, right. the 53% the, the of redefault rates that we heard about last week, 55% yep. uh, of the, the modified mortgages are redefaulting once again. How many of those are because of people that had two properties or at least were thinking of flipping the one that they had? 70% of them. 70%. And we also know that 70% of loans that are existing out there that are about to go into foreclosure or are already in default are owned by investors and do not qualify for modification programs. Peter, is that about the same percent that you were, you, you were dealing with there, about 70% of those redefaults or people that were just trying to flip them? You know, David, I'd, I'd tell you probably it's at least 70 percent. It's probably going to be much higher than that. Keep in mind, in a 60-block stretch of downtown Miami, we put up 23,000 units in an area that up for the 40 years prior, they only built 11,500. So we tripled in size, and there's no way that full-time primary residents were going to live in those units. So I'd say our, our 70 percent is probably, or our rate, ratio is probably closer to 80, 90 percent even. Madeline, let me just ask, what happened to that second property that you were talking about? It's in the process of a short sale. A short sale. Okay, so that's you, you've, you've just offloaded that. Did you put any money down in purchase of that property? Yes. It Three. was my first original property in 2001. And, and how much did you put down on that? Um, I think it was 10%. 10%. Okay, so that was, a, that was a decent. Would you ever consider a loan in which you, you put less than 10% again in your life, Madeline? No. Yeah. Never. Yeah, well... The lesson, the lesson has been learned by the whole country. Quickly, Peter, go ahead. Yeah, what I wanted to mention, if you look at the FDIC's uh, loan modification guidelines, what you're seeing is they're suggesting to banks that they should take down an interest rate as low as 3%, and they should look at a 40-year amortization rather than a 30-year amortization just to keep people in their homes. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, it's still not enough with people with the, with the FDIC requirements of the 38 percent debt to income ratio. It's still not enough for many people to qualify. Danny Babb, Peter Zalewski and Madeline Lockhart. We wish you the very best, Madeline. Thanks for joining us. Coming up on deck, some 